Okay, I want to uh, record a video to show kind of uh, what I want you to do for the lab um, uh, on, uh, on Thursday the uh, 11th of February. And so, uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a lab video. And so you can see here's the integrated development environment right here. And wh what we want, what I want you to do is go ahead and, and click on the uh, uh, this Freedom Board uh, KL25Z driver examples ADC16 interrupt and go up here to project and hit open project. Mine's already open. And then uh, go down here and, and make sure you've double clicked on the uh, ADC16 interrupt.c so you've got this up here. And uh, then uh, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and pull up the, let's see, we don't need this one, drivers. Yeah, it's the FS, uh, FSL ADC16. Uh, it's the dot C that we want. The dot H doesn't even have much in it. And, uh, and, and here's that. And so we'll, we'll talk about these things in a minute. There are some, there, there's quite a few functions in here. Uh, all right, so, uh, so let's let's see how this works, and then we'll uh, come back to it in a minute. Now, I've I have modified uh, mine just a little bit, and uh, what I've done, um, if I can pull my stuff out here. Let's see if I can see that. Uh, no, I have to screw with this. So. So I have my, um, I could put it down, I guess, underneath the camera. I'll just put it underneath this camera. And then, okay, something like that. All right, I'll, I'll turn this on and put it underneath here. Oh, let's see. So what I what I have I have a little um, I have a little pot here, and uh, so the the pot. Um, let's make sure I see I manage the ground. Yeah. All right. So so I I'm using the analog board, but I I don't want you to do that because I, I didn't even use it for two seconds and I blew out my temperature sensor. Uh, just truly ignorant, but it's easy to do, and so I just soon not have it happen. And that's pot. Yeah. Okay. So, so what this? So let me switch the camera, and uh, I might even switch this over to the other side just for a minute. So let me go in here, camera, and we'll put in that. Okay. So, so I have a little pot here. And then I also have um, my freedom board, and so uh, what I'm wh what I've done, I've plugged into one of the pins here. Now I uh, I'm just pulling power and ground out, and uh, and I'm basically using the pot as a voltage divider, so I can put in a voltage that varies from ground to 3.3 volts into for the moment into this pin, but I may change that. Uh, okay, so uh, so. Uh, so if we look at this, uh, well, let's look at the. So if we pull up, the other thing you can do is pull up doc and the README, and then if you, it's good to read through this and uh, and see what this tells you to do. Uh, this ADC16 example shows how to use the interrupt with the ADC16 driver, and uh, it 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 has pre-selected one of the channels. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to do was switch the channel and eventually we'll switch it and we'll use a couple channels and I, I we may use this as the, sort of the, the, the foundation for our uh, uh, for our uh, tail table software since right now I haven't ported the software from Code Warrior that we used to use and I don't know if I, I, it's it may be a little bit of a challenge to get that done so we'll see so I may uh, I may just start over again and what this is going to do every time you hit a carriage return in this console window down here it's going to it's going to do another conversion 
and then that when the conversion finishes it'll pull up the interrupt and it'll increment count print out count and then it'll print out the value and so you will kind of be able to track how many times we do it and and we'll kind of we'll maybe raise this up a little bit so we have a little more space down here okay so first I'm just going to run it and I uh, um, this kind of gives some info anyway uh, let me uh, go back to here and then what I did I did change um, I changed my channel um, yeah and I'm trying to think now I've kind of actually forgotten what I did um, so it's going to print this out and then uh, channel structure so I think it does this here uh, and it pans now I think it does it down here um, no oh yeah I think this is it uh, demo ADC 16 user channel and so so this is uh, this this is where we can change the channel and um, so yeah and so uh, so I think I changed that and then where was this it was up here yeah so I changed it to channel 12 it was originally set uh, it's originally set when if, when you bring it up bring it up it's going to be set on um, let's see I'm gonna have to look uh, so if we pull up pull up the document and we go to, to chapter 10 and we look at the multiplexing table which uh, I'm you know you'll use this table a lot uh, so if you go down here uh, remember the, the the ADC channels are kind of default yeah and the and ADC zero this so uh, there are double-ended channels and single-ended we we're going to use mostly we're going to use single-ended so we so in this case PTE 20 can be the the positive side of the of the uh, of the dual uh, double ended and so ADC 0 double ended positive would be 20 and 21 would be ADC 0 uh, double ended minus but we're going to use just the uh, the single ended and so the original software comes up with PTE 20 and the pin for PTE 20 uh, is uh, Is it's uh, this one right here? Let's see. I have to change my glasses. It is. It's this one right there. So it's actually, if we line this up like that, it's this pin. It's that pin right there. Right. It's this pin right here. So that's the pin that you'll actually use if you don't change the channel. The the first pin on the inside of this uh, top header, right here. Okay. But I'm I'm switching. I switched it to the pins that we're going to actually use for the tilt table, and um, we'll we'll pull that up eventually. But um, so let me change the camera back and uh, okay. And uh, yeah, that's great. And let me make this big. Okay. And I think that's good, and we'll do that. All right. So, um, all right. So now you can see. Uh, so that's that's PTE twenty, and that that is uh, that is channel zero. Channel twelve, on the other hand, uh, if we go down to let's see, maybe it was already before here. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, channel twelve is PTB two. And channel 13 is PTB3, and those are the two we're going to use because that's that's how we've configured our our uh, our, our adapter board, and um, and so that's the one I'm using now. All right, so I'm going to run it, and we'll we'll let this we'll we'll run debug and we'll let it go and see how it works. Hopefully, it'll, hopefully it'll be good. Okay, and looks like we're yeah we're gonna switch to the to the debug view, and so I'm gonna have to expand this again. 
make this a little bigger. Okay, now I can run it. And then, uh, let's see if it actually did do it. Oh, okay, it did it. It had some kind of timeout. Let's try it one more time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna force discovery. So it, sometimes you should go down here, and when you hit build, go ahead and and uh, and. Uh, Hit the uh, sorry. Hit the hit the uh, shift key, and that forces discovery. And so it's going to give you this. And now hopefully it'll find it. I guess it didn't find it this last time. Okay, so no errors. That's good. And then P and E semi hosting console, and now it looks like it's happy. I'm a little suspicious of that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it says ADC 16 interrupt example. Uh, do auto calibration. It's done. Now let me just say this. The uh, and we'll talk. I'll talk more about the ADC. Uh, I'm probably not going to do it now because it's late tonight, and I want to get this done so you can have it for your lab guide tomorrow. But uh, but the ADC converter on this chip is very sophisticated, and one of the things it does is every time you boot up the chip you're supposed to go through this fancy calibration it's about 40 lines of code and uh, and then once it calibrates itself it stores some, some the calibration values into registers within the AD, ADC module and then it's it, it makes it a lot more accurate than if you don't calibrate it uh, but uh, plenty of people have used it without calibrating it and get pretty good results so you don't have to calibrate it but it's a good idea and, and it's a good idea to calibrate it every time you use it. Okay, so anyway, so now when I hit a hit a key here, and I'm just gonna put my cursor in this console window, and I'm just gonna hit a carriage return. And so it measures uh, 4092, and the it's doing a it's doing a uh, a 12 bit conversion. So so the maximum conversion value is 4096, and the minimum is zero. So if you're putting 3.3 volts in, you should be something very close to 4096. And if you're putting zero volts in, you should be close to zero. So I'm going to change the pot, and and uh, so I think it's all the way all the way uh, towards 3.3 volts. So I'm going to back it off now, and it should be just a little bit less than that. Now I'll hit a carriage return. Yeah, so 35, and then I'll I'll go a little little less, and uh, we'll hit it again. Okay, 23, and then I'll go a little less on the pot. And we'll hit it again, 11, 07, and then I'll go a little bit further, and, they, and 100, and then finally I'll go all the way counterclockwise, and it should be close to zero, zero. Okay, so what I want you to do is to do this exact same uh, experiment, but you only get two values. Uh, you need to take a piece of uh, piece of wire, and with the uh, with the wire, and I'll show you here. Uh, I think I have one, hopefully. Um, yeah, so so I'm gonna, I'll switch back the camera here so you can see what's going on and I, maybe I'll expand it too. Okay, and then I'll go, I'll go all the way over here and then I'm gonna switch, I'll do one more thing. Okay, so you can still see me a little bit. All right, and um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to take out all this stuff, and I'm just going to. So, but but this is the pin I'm using. Remember, you're going to be using the pin here, but I'm using the pin there. And let me, I think I can draw on this. So let's see, pin and color. So so I'm using this pin, but you need to use the inside row and the pin right here, right there. And that's PTE20, okay? So P, it's E20, PTE20. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, these are the, this is ground, ground, and then you skip one, and then it's 3.3 .3 volts. So, uh, so watch what happens when we do that. So I'll, um, maybe I'll shrink this down. Let's see, I can do that. 
uh, shrunk it down a lot, didn't I? Oh, it went back over there. That's kind of crazy that it did that. Okay, so so I'm going to put it right here, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and take these wires out because this is how you're going to do it because you, you don't have a pot. And if you have a pot, then you can set up and use your pot, and that'll be great. Okay, so first I'm going to go with ground, and and you can use your little guide. You ha we have our little guide here that came in your box, and so if you see, look over here. The first pin is a uh, is an input voltage pin that goes to the regulator, so you don't want to use that. And uh, and then the next one is uh, ground, ground, and then uh, the USB voltage, which we don't want to use, of five volts, and then so then but then three point three. So I'm first going to go to ground. And those are those are on the outside, okay. So so I skip one, and now I go to ground, and then I'm going to plug that into uh, B2, I think. Isn't that what I said? And I have to get my better glasses on. Yeah, B2, which is one, two, three pins up. So so uh, one, two, yeah. One, two, three pins up. So I'm going to ground that pin now. And uh, now let's hit the carriage return down here. And uh, I'm just I'm going to clear this so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So I'm still at zero. Now watch. I'll change this. Uh, I'll go from the ground. So ground, ground, the input 5 volts, and 3.3. Hopefully it's 3.3 .3 and I'm not going to burn anything up. And be careful though, if you plug it in the wrong hole. And look, now we have 4095. So it goes from 0 to 4095. So you should be able to get those two values by changing that ju jumper. Now, um, if you want to change, so you can see where this, uh, where this, where we defined the, the channel number. It's right up here, demo ADC16 user channel and then it's equivalent to 12 unsigned. So if I make that equal to zero, then uh, that'll, that'll bring it back to uh, PTE 20, okay? And so let's recompile. We'll stop this with the red square, and then uh, we'll hit the debug. I think we can hit the debug up here now without any trouble, the blue one. And then, uh, yes, we'll save this, update the code. And then now, uh, what I'll have to do is I'll have to hook it up with PTE 20, which again, my PTE 20 is this on the inside. You can you can barely see it, but it's the first it's the first pin on the inside, and so so we'll uh, uh, I may put my pot back on it just to just to convince myself that it's going to work nicely. Oops. Sorry, this is ground. So I need to do this one. Okay, so here's my pot, and I'm going to connect up. So I'm going to connect up ground to ground. There's ground, and then I'll connect up power to 3.3 .3 volts. So I go another another ground, then the 5 volts, then 3.3, .3. and then I'll put this in, my the wiper on my pot, I'll put it into, uh, I'll put it into PTE 20 now, which is right here, and now it should work with the new pin, uh, let's see, you couldn't see that, so let me, so now I have it in the PTE 20, Instead of the pin here, I've got it in the pin on the inside. You can, you can only kind of see that. But it's on the inside row. You can kind of see it there. All right. And now, let me, uh, let me uh, run it. It's going to calibrate the ADC again. And then we'll hit the first key. And I think I have it set on zero. Yep. And then I'll turn it up a little bit. And we'll hit it again. Yep, and then a little bit more, and yep, and a little bit more, 
Yep. And then finally I'll max it out. And it may not get quite all the way to 4095, but it should be close. Well, it got there, so that's great. Okay, so I change so you can see I can change the pin just by doing that. But what if I wanted to sample two different ports and I wanted to alternate them? Well, to do that, uh, what I'd have to do is I would have to uh, so I go back up here where I changed the channel number. Let's see, right, uh, right here, and I so I go back to I say I want to do 12 and then I'd want to do 13. So what I do and I instead of changing it here, uh, then I'd I'd have to make that a variable and uh, or whatever, and then I would change the variable, or I could just change it in the uh, I could just change it uh, in this structure. So here, here's where it's, here's where it actually loads the channel number, right here. Um, does the calibration first, and then um, it prints out it's done, and then uh, then we're gonna load up. So here we do uh, channel. So eight uh, the ADC sixteen channel configuration structure dot channel number equals the channel number. That's that's the name of the channel number that we defined. But I could just as easily put a variable here and change that variable uh, from 12 to 13 and back to 12 and back to 13. And then, um, so uh, so what I might do is, uh, let's see if I want to set that up. Since it's not in the infinite while loop, I, I would have to move it into my while loop. And, and basically, uh, what I want you to do is go through, I want you to look at this code and kind of study it. And uh, I want you to read this. The, it's this is in what's called software trigger mode. The ADC can be set up to automatically re, as soon as it completes a conversion. You can actually program in several different channel numbers, and it'll just switch. It'll it'll scan the channels, uh, convert them, uh, give you an interrupt, and then go to the next channel, give you an interrupt, go to the next channel, and you can set up the two channels you're interested in, and just have it do it continually updating. Uh, so we'll probably try and set it up like that. But this actually get kind of tells you how, what you have to do to make this work. And it says when in software trigger mode, each conversion would be launched once, calling the AD16 channel config function, which works like writing a conversion command and executing it. For another channel's conversion, just change the channel number field in the channel configuration structure and call the function again. Also, the enable interrupt on conversion completed inside the channel configuration structure is a parameter for the conversion command and it takes effect just for the current conversion. If the interrupt is still required for the following conversion, it's necessary to assert the enable interrupt on conversion complete every time for each command. Now you, you can set it up so it'll always interrupt, but this is just how they set this one up. And and uh and so uh so anyway and so here you go, uh, ADC set channel config demo base demo ADC channel group, uh, uh, and then they put in the address of the channel configuration, and then uh, they wait uh, until the conversion flag is uh, is done, and then it prints out the conversion value, and uh, updates the interrupt counter, and then goes back and does it again. Clears the clears the flag here, I guess, and um, and uh, and the uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what the get character function is doing here. A little confused about that, but anyway, um, so this is this is really all. This is the while loop. There's nothing much to it, and uh, so what I want you to do is is see if you can change the channel. See if you can configure a couple different channels. Now remember, uh, you're only going to be able to input 3.3 volts or zero. Make sure you, when you input the 3.3 volts, you don't input five volts because that could screw things up. Uh, that could burn your board up. Probably not burn it up, but it it might it might uh, heat some parts up on the inside and damage them a little bit. So make sure you plug it into one of the pins labeled 3.3 volts, and, and it's right next to the five volt pin. So just be careful. And then when you go to ground. Uh, make sure you plug it into ground. So s you can alternate between ground and and 3.3 volts, and you should read zero when you when you short the uh, pin to ground. You should read uh, uh, when you put it on 3.3 volts. You should read a little more. Now, if you do have some resistors or a potentiometer, then you, then you could you could, it would be smart to put a resistor in line 
with your wire uh, so that uh, so that and it can be a pretty high value resistor but 10k would be fine 5k would be fine 1k would be fine a few hundred ohms would be fine um, probably a, probably a bunch of mega ohms would not be so good because it would, might not might, the, the higher the input impedance is the uh, the the longer it takes to charge up that little sampling capacitor and you eventually get the time constant so large that it that uh, that it's not going to get charged up to the proper voltage fast enough. Uh, so you don't want a ridiculously high uh, resistance. Uh, something like a few thousand ohms though should be fine, and that will kind of protect your pin. So if you've got a resistor, you should throw that into the mix. Um, if you come into the lab, uh, I'll bring in some pots and we'll give you some. We'll, we'll, I think I can find some pots to use and we'll 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 see if we can set that up. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's that's what I want you to do for the lab. I, I will prepare a lab sheet and have you and also put some of this on there as well. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the video and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get through this lab without any trouble.